How do I, how do I, what do I do with my hands? I started making YouTube videos in 2009 when I was in, still in secondary school. I remember I was sec four at the time and I was, I was just very inspired by the Asian American YouTubers that were on YouTube at the time. The Wong Fu's, the David Choi's, Kev Jumba. Those were the ones among others that I would used to watch all the time. A lot of my friends and a lot of the young kids were just like watching all of those people on YouTube and we sort of just wanted to do the things that they did. I wanted to be like them. And back then there wasn't really a YouTube scene in Singapore. No one was really doing it consistently and no one was really big. Me being young and eager and full of hope, I just wanted to try it. I just wanted to try and see where it went. The initial response wasn't great. So I was in secondary school at the time and this was a very new thing. The way my friends responded was just not the greatest. They were like, hey, why are you doing this? Stop doing it. You know, it's embarrassing. You're not gonna get anywhere. And just comments like that, that just made me not feel so great. I was doing something that I liked and I just didn't understand why they would say something like that when it was something that I enjoyed doing. I felt very demoralized by their reactions and people's comments. I made my first ever viral video called so Singaporean. I remember it was a school day and I had the idea of doing something that was related to Singaporean culture. At that time, there were a lot of like famous like Twitter accounts like on Twitter. <laughs> One of them was So Singaporean and they had a lot of hits because it was very relatable. So they would say something that's related to Singaporean culture, everyone would laugh and I kind of wanted to do like a visual representation of that. So I went home, I remember cabbing home from school because I was like just so eager to do it. Compiling a list of things that people would relate to. And then I went home and shot the video and that was it. I didn't think too much about it. I didn't think it would get anywhere. My mindset going into it was like, oh, here's something that a few of my friends and maybe family could laugh to. I just didn't expect it to get the attention that it did. As soon as I uploaded the video, I remember So Singaporean shared it on Twitter and I was like, whoa, this is such a big deal because nobody up until that point had ever shared my videos. So to me, that was a big thing. And then suddenly I saw bigger names like Dikosh. Some of the other famous Singaporean Twitter accounts were sharing it. Very soon I would see more and more people share it. That same night, my name was trending. So Singaporean was trending and my name was trending on Twitter. I was like, there's no way this is happening. The next day, my video was on the front page of YouTube and I was like, such a strange feeling because it was a literal overnight thing and I just thought, this can't be real sir. And then I started receiving phone calls from newspaper outlets like Shin Min Daily. I remember the conversation very clearly. They called me and I was like, is this a joke? <laughs> They were like, no, it's not a joke, we were going to interview you. And I was like, okay. And then the newspaper came out. I had a physical copy and when I saw it, I was like, yo, this is a real thing. <laughs> I couldn't read it <laughs> because it was in Chinese, but I was like, whoa, it's me. And uh, from there, things just took off. Even Jack Neal asked me to be in A Boys to Men. I said no, but to me, that was a thing that I never thought would happen. I remember the reactions from my friends really vividly. I did the video on a Friday and it was on Monday when I first went back to school and I was late. First lesson was in the lecture theatre so I came in late. I opened the door and there was a silence and everyone was staring at me and I was like... So I sort of like tiptoed to my seat. I sat down. The first thing my friend did was tap me on the back and he was like, Sam, can I get your autograph? And that's when I knew, okay, these people know too. And after the lesson, they were surrounding me inside the lecture theater and asking me like, oh, what happened? What did doing this and that? And asking me all sorts of questions. They were, they were taking photos. So it was just suddenly I was being treated differently from a few days back. But I also got attention from people that I didn't know. So whenever I walked around school, I would be stared at. Random people would come and talk to me. There would be whispers, I would hear it like pointing to me. It was just a very new feeling because I've been at this place, which was TP for quite a while and no one, no one really ever paid attention. And then suddenly it's like the whole world seemed to be watching me. That was the public aspect. But suddenly everybody online was watching me as well. Just like the stuff that I would tweet because I was still on Twitter at that time, would get a lot of reactions we'll get a lot of retweets, we'll get a lot of replies from people. I mean, I got the attention from bigger names like Dikosh, Tosh Rock. I was suddenly the Angmo on YouTube that everybody knew. I started to get unwanted attention 
whenever I went out. I think I slowly realized how introverted I was. Talking to a camera on YouTube is a bit different from talking to somebody in real life. People would have a certain impression of who I am, which is like all oh, the talkative funny guy. And when they saw me in real life, it would be a bit different. So there would be a bit of a disappointment and they would say things like, oh, you're not as friendly as I thought you were. You're not as funny. You're not as talkative as I thought you were. One girl once told me, you're not as cool as I thought you were. Yeah, so sometimes when I went out to do something, I just wanted to do that thing. And I just wanted a bit more privacy lah. When I, when I did those things. It's not that I'm not friendly, it's just sometimes I feel awkward, I feel shy, I have anxiety when I talk to people. It's something that I wasn't comfortable with last time. I didn't know how to quite deal with that aspect of the fame and the popularity. After I got new audiences from So Singaporean, I wanted to make more videos like So Singaporean to cater to even greater audiences that will come in and subscribe and view my stuff. Because sometimes I would put out stuff that wasn't like so Singaporean, sometimes I would get comments on the music stuff, which was the stuff that I really cared about. I would get comments like, oh, when are you going to make more funny videos? When are you going to make so Singaporean part 5, part 6, part 7, part 89? So those were the comments that sort of stuck with me. And there were also a lot of comments about how fake I was because I don't look like how I sound like. So there were a lot of comments saying, oh, you know, he's not even Singaporean. Why is a foreigner doing this kind of thing? And the funny ones were, oh, you never even make your bed. You're such a messy person. <laughs> Honestly, you know what? I actually went through an identity crisis during that time. I didn't realize how much of a novelty, like me speaking in a Singaporean accent would be because that's the way I've always been. I didn't really see myself as like a special thing of like, oh, he looks different, but he speaks in a local way. When I first did the video, it didn't occur to me that that would be a thing. I was just doing the video. I think the more I did it, the more I played into that role and the more I sort of lost myself along the way. Eventually it got to a point and I, I sat down and I asked myself like, what am I doing sir? Why am I playing out this character just for people to laugh at? Yeah, so honestly, if you actually look at the videos now, right? It's sort of an exaggerated version of how I spoke. I think it was something that was always at the back of my mind. I stopped enjoying it because of the reception that I had. I started doing things that people wanted and what people expected of me, but it just wasn't me. I was really depressed at the time because I only realized this recently, but I didn't have anyone I, that I could speak to during that time who could relate to what I was going through. None of my friends could possibly comprehend what was going on. They didn't understand what the repercussions were of being an online personality. Everyone that I spoke to would say things like, you got popularity, you know, you got fame, you got this, you got that. How can you possibly be sad about it? So everybody was telling me how they felt, but no one was hearing me. Eventually, I just stopped. When I stopped, I think I felt peaceful. There wasn't any sort of grand exit. There wasn't any sort of announcement. It was just gradually, I just stopped doing it. Yeah, I felt peaceful for a while because it was something that I was thinking about for a long time. But it also felt like, I also felt really unsettled. like. What could have been, you know? So since I stopped making YouTube videos, I've pursued music. I was fortunate enough to play music when I was in the army. That led me to pursuing a music degree in La Salle. I have a music degree, so if anybody wants to pursue music, don't know. I'll study law or something like I've been doing music ever since then, and since then I've released music on Spotify. I've played so many gigs that I can't even count anymore. I like it. And even though I've stopped YouTube, I've still been on Instagram. My handle used to be SamiD, but two years ago, in early 2020, it got deleted. I don't know why it got disabled. So I spent a couple of weeks afterwards trying to get it back, but I never got an explanation. And it kind of just forced me to restart everything. So I got all my followers through gigs, and during that time, things just closed down. It was right at the start of the pandemic and I couldn't do much about it. That made me feel really helpless. But since then, I've restarted it. Find me there if you want. I am back on YouTube because it's something that's always been at the back of my mind and I feel like present day me, it's a lot better equipped to deal with whatever comes my way. I've been going to therapy for many years, five or six years. I feel like I've gotten the help that I wanted. And I've talked about this many times before and I've gotten a lot of clarity on the subject. It makes me excited, you know? I haven't felt this 
way since before so Singapore when I was making YouTube videos for myself. And because I'm old now, I am much better equipped to deal with whatever comes my way. I know the landscape has really changed, you know, there's TikTok, there are other YouTubers now in the scene. Instagram is a thing. But whatever comes my way now, I feel like I can definitely deal with it a lot better. Ah yes, I'm gonna be posting more funny stuff, more music stuff, more vlogs, and more collaborations. That's gonna be a thing. I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do it well. You guys are gonna... Even if I don't get the same amount of views and attention as last time, I'm just gonna keep doing the stuff that I like. And that makes me really excited. Yeah, and I hope you uh, stay tuned to the new stuff for all time's sake. Enjoy!